Hello everyone and welcome to 59 Gaming, your source for news and updates for everything gaming related. My name is Sunblade and we are live with episode 33 of the Dokkan Battle Podcast Legendary Grand Tour. Again, today's episode is pre-recorded and only went live on YouTube. You know the deal, so let's go ahead and introduce today's guests. We got a newcomer for today's episode, Ignan is here, so say hello everyone. Hello, people. Someone is excited. <laughs> I, I was. I had a piece of food in my mouth when you said. I was not expecting it. <laughs> <laughs> the king has reclaimed his throne and fulfilled his destiny. Welcome, the Mass Ningen. Yo, how's it going, everybody? Truth, you don't have additional comments for this one, right? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not this week. No, no, I mean, I mean, no, he did good. Hooray! <laughs> finally, did very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very well Some praise finally. I finally noticed the. <laughs> <laughs> okay i can't remember the last time i introduced the walking anime and gacha game bible but it's my pleasure to say hello to gay riot yo what's good everybody how is everybody doing today glad to be back finally it's been a minute yeah welcome back man welcome back the ally king and apparently the greatest fan of resident evil village is here the <laughs> truth <laughs> you're a funny guy <laughs> thanks yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> and because he likes it that much, last but not least, the homie, Goresh. Hello, everybody. Let's talk about Dokkan. Yeah, he sounds excited. That's an excited person there. Yep. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> So before we start, make sure to subscribe to 59 Gaming on all social media platforms. Make sure to check out our link tree to get quick access. So without further ado, let's begin with episode 33, Legendary Grand Tour. The GT edition of the Legendary Goku event is finally out on Dokkan Battle. Yes, for Global and JP and like the OG one, you fight against Goku in a longer event with multiple stages. From Kid Goku to... Oh my god, I hate this. Super full power Saiyan for Goku. <laughs> Yeah, of course, cool. Akatsuki oh, never did. <laughs> of course, Akatsuki released some missions with the event, so we have to beat the GT edition with teams like Gorold Buddy and Mind, Battle of Wits, and some more. Did any of you guys played this event yet, and what are your experiences? I did one run on my actual account. It's fun. The Goku event's my favorite event in the game, and I'm glad they have like a harder version of it. Yeah, I did um, the Resurrected Warriors team with the Angel Golden Freeze lead. And it was like him, I used to have Gohan, AGL Bardock, it's like a lot of these stacking units. And uh, yeah, I mean, the event is basically just a very, very tuned up version of the one that we have already, which is fine. Um, they added some other gimmicks there, like there are some phases that lower defense on super attack. There's some phases, not just the final one, that dodge attacks. So there's a little bit of variety in there, but it's basically the same thing as the one we have already. Yeah, yeah, I was uh, I was quite surprised because I saw a bunch of uh, people who got on it very quickly and uploaded a video of their first runs. Uh, a couple of you guys tried out different teams that weren't the specific mission ones. Um, I tried out the Battle of Wits one first because I figured out of all the missions that one was probably going to be the easiest. And uh, it wasn't particularly difficult. The one thing I did notice, uh, like Goresh was saying, about it being a sort of tuned up version. Because obviously in the news they basically advertised it as having a difficulty level similar to Extreme Super Battle Road. And after actually having played a couple of runs on it now, it does very much seem like they basically went through the same process that they did when they, you know, made OG Super Battle Road into Extreme Super Battle Road, because it is essentially the same as the Legendary Goku event. You even have, like, you know, Super Saiyan 4 Goku dodges in the last stage and disables your dodge. Um, but all of the damage and everything is just tuned up to be a lot higher. So um, obviously we'll talk about the missions in a bit more detail, but like so some of the uh, teams are going to be a little bit interesting, especially if you haven't gotten the uh, most recent like Dokkan Fest units that have come out. Um, but obviously the missions are not something, we were talking about this before starting recording, but remember the missions are not something that you have to get all of them done on day one. So obviously it does give people something to work towards but while some of them are very hard i'm pretty sure as long as you do have the units like none of them are impossible uh, even on global so yeah no i completely agree with uh Ningen on that i i actually like this event like some parts of the event kind of intrigued me like Gores said the lowering defense i was kind of 
keen on i was hoping that that would be a feature in here mm, was more so hoping it would be kind of like just generally like normal attacks as well to kind of neutralize st stacking units a bit uh to an extent uh but i also really like the grade a phase where it's just he has lowered hp but he does massive amounts of damage right mm. kind of makes it a bit more a bit different compared to normal uh because more often than not it's just like they have high hp and they do damage this one is just like okay he has low hp but he will you know ruin your day probably mo and most likely so uh i really like that stage and yeah i've only done uh two to three runs i did one trying to fulfill nolar's challenge with reps of universe 7 quickly realized that was a complete <laughs> failure and not i was never gonna do that again uh at least until the anniversary comes around and we have more units to rely on um I really got close with uh, Giant A power, or as it should be, Great A power, but alas, AGL SSJ4 Goku wasn't up to the task, so I'm gonna have to rely on when STR SSJ4 gets his easy potentially. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think it's good. Yeah. I think the event is good. Um, it's it's just one of these things, right? Again, this is another one of those like it's not intended to be like the savior of the game, right? It's just mm -hmm. one more thing added. Uh -huh. They got a lot of these category missions in there, which I mean, here's the thing. It seems like a lot of people don't even remember that the original Legendary Goku event did not even release with category missions, right? Those were released later on. Yeah. So, like, they dropped the events, right? But then they also had these extra category missions, which, again, it's like, for the global thing, I'm seeing a lot of people, like, uh, upset specifically about reps of Universe 7. <laughs> but it's like, I don't like, would you guys rather have this event come in November? Like, what do you want? Like, there's literally no way where this could have been done without complaint, right? They yeah. drop it now, people complain. They drop it in November, people complain. They drop it now without missions, people would complain. Yep. There's actually no scenario where they could do anything without complaints, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think the way they did it is the best way they should have, which is both versions. All the missions that they've got ready to go right now are on both versions. You don't have to beat it second one, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's, yeah. it'll yeah. be okay if the mission sits there, if you're a global like free-to-play player until like July, if you get like in Evolution Blue Vegeta, like he would pretty much solo this event right like he just yep. destroys it um i think it's fine right it's just a, a sort of like a, a buffed up version mm -hmm. um of the legendary goku event i'm sure we'll get more sort of like category missions added to it with time yeah. um but one interesting thing i did notice is that the way they're now sort of balancing difficulty with these events i feel like it's not even toning up the bosses but it's restricting your item usage, right? Yeah. That's how they're doing it. Cause that's the thing with the God event. You're only allowed to bring one item. In this one, you're only allowed to bring two. Infinite Dragon Ball history, you can only bring two. So that's a way they could, you know, power up the bosses for sure, but not make it to where like ultra full power Goku is doing like 1.5 million on super attacks, right? <laughs> yeah. So like you can, I feel like yeah. the way it's designed is a little bit more helpful for like some of the older characters than if they let you bring four items, but Goku was even harder, that I think would have X'd out a lot of older characters from even being considerations in here. So mm. I like what yeah. they did with it. I think it's fine. And again, like along with all this other stuff in the celebration, like this isn't the only thing going on, right? There's a million other things on both versions. So I think it's good. Yeah. And that's I, not I the thing is, uh, okay. Uh, Ningen, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. I, I was just going to say, because the thing is, you know, with these long form events, if you can put a team together, it's like you said, there's a mul multiple different ways they could have done it. And unfortunately, we know what the player base is like. Some people will yeah. complain regardless of which way they do it, because if they'd released it without the missions, then not only would I guess people complain, even if the missions weren't on both versions, but then if you're not restricted in any way to what kind of team you use, whilst the event is slightly harder, people are going to put together their best infinite stacking unit team, beat the event, and then you don't have anything else to do, and then those people will complain that it wasn't enough content. So I definitely think it's better to have a bunch of these missions that potentially will be something that you can't complete straight away and have to work towards, because it just gives you more reasons to go back in and play the event again um you know and they are all doable it's just it's end game content as well at the end of the day if your major complaint is that you personally don't have the units to be able to beat every mission i mean it is end game content so you're not it's not necessarily designed for every single person who plays the game to be able to beat every single mission on day one it's just something that you're going to build up to over time so i, I do very good like because it. It, it adds more longevity to the event I really yeah exactly like that. I, I also have to add, like you mentioned, right, it adds longevity, but it also allows them to sell banners more because now 
it incentivizes people to potentially summon for these characters that they may not have. Like, for example, mm -hmm. Corroded Body and Mind Erosion, or whatever it's called on... I keep forgetting its actual name, but Mind and Body Erosion. Most people don't have Tech Janemba because most people probably skipped AGL PyCon and Tech Janemba, especially on Global, right? So it kind of incentivizes people to summon when they're on certain banners in the future as well. Allowing them to sell banners more rather than people all oh, saying, oh, this is a bad banner, skip, mm -hmm. kind of, right? So And so people can summon for these characters that they may need for completing said missions. So it also allows them to sell banners, in my opinion. The one thing I will say about not even just this event in particular, but also this plays into just the format of how this event was designed. And this actually just goes into the whole stacking unit thing that we've had in this game for a while which is this event, in order for it to be re even remotely difficult, has to be balanced around stacking units. Because if it's not, you're just going to go with stacking units and you're just going to demolish the event, right? Yeah, um, exactly. Yep. And, and the fact that stacking units, like, you compare stacking units in this event to non-stacking units, and it's like night and day, right? There's, there's basically like a, a giant gap in between the, the effectiveness and power level of stacking units for defense I'm talking about in this event versus non-stacking units. So that's why they have to balance the event around that. And so that what that does is it means that any unit you're bringing that's not stacking has to be absurdly powerful. Otherwise, they're going to be useless, right? Mm. Yeah. yeah, and it makes team building a little bit more interesting because then you, like you say, you have to be a bit more careful. Like if you want to bring, there might be a support unit that you love to run every time you run a specific category. But in this event, like chances are that guy, if you have to have him take even two or three attacks in one turn is potentially going to get you killed yeah so you have to think a bit more about how you build the teams yeah the only reason why i'm, I'm here, actually yes. i was gonna say the only reason why i'm actually okay with that <laughs> in this instance is because there's so many other events that you can play that aren't geared towards like these long drawn out events like super battle road is like the opposite mm -hmm. of this event right yeah that's why i'm okay with this if this was like the sole difficult event in this game then i would have a huge problem with it but I think the fact that they have like separate events where like certain types of units can be good in is is good. Mm -hmm. All I'm hearing is that Super Saiyan Blue Kyle Kin still sucks. <laughs> I mean, he could probably one shot the last phase still. Mm. Nah, I just watched a video and he didn't one shot it. Sad. Well, he probably didn't super enough. <laughs> he had like nine billion attack stat and all kinds of stuff. And it took a UI Goku, a spear bomb, a 9 million attack stat from him, him taking 200k in the super with two items up, and then the LR Blue Bros to finish it off. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, let's go global for that. <laughs> that let's seven go! <laughs> <laughs> let's go, so, kid. <laughs> in the news, Akatsuki said that this GT edition is pretty much like Extreme Soul Battle Road in terms of difficulty. Um... We briefly talked about this, but do you agree with that statement? Well, I I think that's just sort of like hyperbole. Like they just mm. toss it out there yeah. to say like, mm. hey, this mm. is one of our most difficult events, really. Mm. Not like mm. not a direct statement that it's mm. like equivalent, but just like this is like our highest tier of difficulty sort of thing. Mm. Yeah. Because okay. yeah. I, I personally, I think the God event is still the hardest event in the game. Well, for yep. me, this sort of just plays into the point that I just made where it's like, yeah, it's harder than the old Legendary Goku event, but all that means is stacking units are going to be even more mandatory here than they were in the old one. Uh -huh. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, you could notice it, especially when uh, uh, Truth did his first no item run and he just took basically every stacking unit that Hybrid Saints has to offer, yeah, it's, it's... including the SSR form of Tech Ultimate Gohan, <laughs> and he no item the first attempt. <laughs> and that's a, that's pretty much evidence of how powerful stacking units can be, even in the SSR format. We we see so many people even taking the SSR form, uh, and especially in the old Legendary Goku event. I remember so many people even reversed their transforming Goku to SSR yes. so that they could stack with him right yeah it's a perfect example of like how powerful stacking units were back then and even more so now like you said because of how how much quote-unquote stronger this event has become i wouldn't even be opposed to maybe not every type of long event but certain longer events in the game maybe the limiting how much you can actually stack your defense they added like an effect on the boss where it made it so that you can't stack attacker defense longer than six turns so Units that are able to stack for six turns, you're still, you're still able to do that. But anything that's like infinite and you have like 
a million defense by the end of the event. Like, obviously, you're not going to be touched, and it's just, like, stack simulator. Like, I, I don't know. I, I just kind of feel like that's a little boring. Make it like you only get three stacks off for the whole event. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. Easy clap. So let's talk about the missions. Um, I'll, I'll kick things off here. So the first one I did was the Corolla Buddy and Mind one because I personally believe that this is the most annoying one. And I have to say that I enjoy these missions because they challenge me in a new way and now I have to use units that I never used before. Uh, mm. Maybe Ningen remembers because I said when the Mars Saiyan got his easy A, like I said, like I don't care about him. <laughs> I will never use him. <laughs> He's, he's good, yes, okay, I give him that, right. he stacks, but now he has his chance to shine, he, he was my MVP uh -huh. for that mission, and um, I, I personally like that, but I see, like, Gale's point, uh, we talked about it earlier, when he said, like, yeah, these missions are not that good, um, I see that, but, but I like the challenge, so what about you guys? It does incentivize a bit of uniqueness because I remember, speaking of corroded body and mind erosion, I did see somebody basically take a complete effective time travelers version of the team effectively with like in rose a double in rose mass Saiyan, dark mass king dark mass Saiyan, and uh who was the other one i don't remember the other other the last unit uh, or the last two units but it at least incentivizes a bit of uh variety but again my i feel like they're trying to promote these newer categories without realizing that they're still extremely limited at the same time right so a lot of people may have not summoned on the category leader or they might not have the broad spectrum of the units. And it can be a bit daunting for just the average player maybe. But I also believe like it's just something that can, like Truth and everybody else said as well, it's something that needs to be done over time and shouldn't be done immediately. But it also is something, I, it clearly is for them to sell these units more, I feel, at the same time. I think it would have been cool if they introduced a new free LR like they do for uh, Super Battle Road. Super Battle Road, yeah. yeah I would maybe, have loved that, What actually. if you complete all the oh. missions and you get like a free LR or something? And you get like Team Bardock. You get another copy of it. <laughs> no, they're saving them for next year's Saiyan Day. <laughs> of course, of course. True, 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 true. Um, but yeah, I think the, uh, the missions are, like we said, over and over again at this point. But <laughs> they are something that you can work towards if you can't do them all straight away. Um, I do wonder if this means that they will ever now ever add any extra categories to the old one, because obviously these are all fairly newer categories. So I don't I think if, so. Yeah. I think any additions would probably just be to this new one. To right. this one, yeah, potentially bring it. Because obviously we've already had, even now on like the JP schedule, there's been a few categories that have come out after those ones that are not missions on this new event. So um, they will potentially be the next set of missions. I actually but. think they might still add missions to the old old Legend of Goku event and the reason for that is because that's basically the same thing as them adding new uh super battle road stages that aren't extreme that is true I uh, actually well, uh, maybe okay no go ahead sorry go ahead I was just gonna say because there is a gap I suppose because where they've mm -hmm. started these categories from there's obviously categories that released before them that are not missions on the old one so I guess they could yeah, be saving like revenge, them right? to stuff do an like update that. yeah I also feel um, that uh, it also gives something to do for players who may not be able to do these category missions, you know, kind of like, oh, you know, we need to also potentially give them more categories that came out maybe in between whatever the last one was that they dropped for final trump card and then whatever they the set that they dropped in this one. Right. Um, I, I, a question maybe to you guys, I think is also uh, a good idea is if they'll add the old category missions, maybe some of the older categories that were in the original Legend of Goku event or maybe not into this event. So maybe say, I don't think we had hybrid saints in the other Legendary Goku event. Do you think they'll add it in this one maybe? Potentially. Yeah. I think at the end of the day, like if we're talking about like four years from now or something like that, we will have the same missions for both events. I think they they want to fill out and have missions available for both events that encompass like almost every category. Like that that's the ideal scenario, mm -hmm. I think. Mm. Um. By the way, so like my first run I used here, or for like one of the categories was obviously double AGL UI Goku <laughs> to push my agenda forward of him as the god of the game. And easy dub. You're wrong. Easy dub. Easy dub. <laughs> easy dub. Yeah, the best one, the best like, unit it, is uh, Blue Cow King Goku. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah well, <laughs> exactly. Okay, so run double blue cow can Goku team and then run double AGL UI Goku team. Tell me which one works better. I just go run ahead. Double. That's everyone's Royal homework blue assignment Vegeta. listening to the podcast. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I just run double Royal Blue Vegeta, the superior one. Yeah, double Easy Evolution clap. Blue Vegeta, you're right. Royal Blue Vegeta. Okay, I'll run Mystic Gohan. How does that sound? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. But he has no links, bro. He sucks. Yeah, I'll run Ultra Trunks. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> all right i want to go back to a point that goresh made like maybe give us a new lr or maybe an extremely awakening for an lr um, because i personally think that the reward system for this event is kind of eh like of course i get my five stones for each mission um and then i get tickets for a new uh banner like the the gt legendary goku event banner and i think spirit bomb goku and ultra instinct goku are on this banner yeah but like you don't don't you don't get a gssr or something like mm -hmm. as for me i only got srs and like i i did this event okay i got my couple stones that's nice but aside from that like just a bunch of srs yeah thank you game um maybe give us something better like what do you think Might yeah be i think it should be a guarantee though. ssr in that banner Cause I feel like it's, aren't those tickets limited? The missions do they refresh? Do we? Nope. Until they okay, add so more. Yeah, that is stupid. It, so yeah, yeah, so it's kind of stupid. It's just like, oh, grind all these missions out. You do this stage a bunch of times, and boom, you get a bunch of SRs that you never use because this game is horrible optimizing their low level units. Yeah, I think what Goresh was well, saying is probably a better idea. Like, if if it was like when they add new Super Battle Road stages, where beating all the missions got you like a new LR, um, would be quite good. Because some people, obviously, for a lot of people, there might be units on the banner that you need. Um, but even if you're not a massive whale, like a lot of those unfeatured SSR Goku's, you don't really need. So all you're really hoping for off of those tickets is. Uh, potentially one of the lrs that you still need dupes for and the thing is like obviously it's all rng at the end of the day like any summoning in this game i've yeah. seen some of the screenshots already on twitter of people pulling two lrs in one of those seven ticket multis but like sunblade was saying um even though i haven't finished all the missions yet because i'm obviously saving them to do on videos all the ones i've done so far i haven't pulled a single ssr at all so other than the stones there obviously hasn't been that much of a reward but I did I see someone some pull LR UI uh... Goku and uh, who else was there's was one of the other LR I think it's Spirit Bomb Goku in the same multi. Shout out to that guy. That that was crazy luck there. <laughs> you got some tasty Baba points thing again. <laughs> True. Very, <laughs> great reward for the event. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna say the only reason why I think potentially adding an LR as a reward is better than just giving tickets for this banner is yeah the tickets are cool summoning is fun whatever. The thing with an LR is you're guaranteed something really cool for, for winning, right? Whereas mm -hmm. with these tickets, you could literally just go in and pull SRs, and that's it. That's your yep. reward for, for winning. One thing I would say that adds to your point is that the recent free-to-play LRs have been a real pleasure, right? Like, the LR Shadow Dragons are insane. Roshi, Prime Battle Frieza. It's like they've done really good with the recent free-to-play LRs. So, mm. like, another mm. one like that would definitely be sick. I mean, they could have potentially done something cool. I mean, especially with your original LG and this one, maybe have done like a full LR transforming Goku, maybe. So for the original one, it could have been, yes, it wouldn't have been amazingly usable considering the other transforming units, but it would have been still a cool LR to just look at and have in your box as like something that goes from base Goku all the way to UI. And in this case, going from base Goku to full power SSJ4 Goku, maybe. How many um, LRs are on the banner? Is it th three? Four. four? I think it's four. four. Three. No, no, yeah, it's four. Good old four. Super Saiyan 3 Goku's yeah. on there as well, I'm yep. pretty sure. Yep. Okay, so <laughs> I just did the math. And so, okay. Okay, so let's just, let's just walk through this. So in total, I'm looking at the banner right now. There's a 10% SSR, right? It's 5% mm -hmm. split between featured and unfeatured. So unfeatured, or the LRs are obviously all unfeatured, right? So yep. there's four LRs. So the way you do this is you do 5% divided by 28. There's 28 total unfeatured characters, right? Mm -hmm. So in total, you have a, what is this? Like a 0.178% chance to pull an unfeatured SSR. And then you wow. multiply that by the four. That's, I think, the four unfeatured LRs. And then you get a 0.7% chance to pull uh, an LR per, per single, I guess is what that is, right? 
which yeah, is not, not great. Jesus <laughs> anyway, so yeah. it's, I, mean, I mean, it's better yeah. than it's, it's better eats than pulling in a left, to be fair. Yeah, I mean, um, I, <laughs> see, I, 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 I calculated out my self correction. That was the same number I got. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Nice. You get a guaranteed Baba points compared to getting guaranteed LR. <laughs> You know, I mean, even even if the LR just sits in your box, it's better than just something that you have that you just I mean, get hey, rid of instantly. You know, you can use it for a future <laughs> chain battle. You never know. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure. Anyway, now we're talking. <laughs> Two hundred IQ sure plays here, bro. <laughs> I'm sure it'd be better than Super Saiyan Blue Kyle Ken still. So I mean. <laughs> okay, I would say let's move on to the next topic. And yeah, the GT Legendary Goku event isn't the only one. Uh, the only event that's new, we also got the Great Feast Goku's Food Battle event that drops a new support item, the Pausosaurus Tail, which <laughs> recovers 2% HP per keys you obtained and all allies attack plus 30% for two turns. Yeah, Goresh just laughed. I cannot pronounce that, that, that name. I'm not <laughs> that, a paleontologist, so I don't care. That, uh, <laughs> it just sounded very German. That, that item yeah. is very, very, very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, yeah Ingen just said it. Changer. Item is very good. It's gonna be very solid. Um, the one thing I wasn't sure about, I actually didn't even look at the uh, English translation of it. Is the HP recovery also two turns, or is it just the first part with the damage? It, it says recovers two percent HP per keys for obtained, and all allies attack thirty percent for two turns. So I assume it's only for two turn, uh, two turns. That two percent HP per. I, that 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 might need a test. Like yeah, I, yeah, I don't in my, I don't want to use any of them at all right now. So like <laughs> this is this is literally the exact same scenario we were in with the uh, the GT Goku and Vegeta with their super attack effect, where the comma doesn't help in turn in letting us yeah. letting us know yeah. what the actual effect is. Yeah, because when I first read it, I assumed it, that the heal was only on the turn you used it, and the attack buff was for two turns. But you're right; it could it could be either. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like Drew said, I don't want to use any of them just yet. So, <laughs> I mean, the fact that the English version is saying "and" makes me think it's both are for two turns. But it's yeah. It, I wish Dokkan had better and more clearer statements of their passives. And wait, is it an mm. is it an "and" symbol or is it the word "and"? Because it actually matters. It's the word "and." Oh, then I don't know. If it was the and symbol, then it would actually not be two turns. But for yeah. the and no, uh, letter, I don't know. Or word. Yeah. Mm. Well, if you guys have used one yet, let us know down below in the comments if yeah. you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but yeah, no, this item is fantastic for the new units. I mean, it's it's obvious who they made it for, basically. Or who is it, like, in line with? And other orb changes, of course, as well. Like, this is fantastic. As a JP player, I can I can't wait to buy it in a barbershop while global has to wait like ten years. Calm yourself, calm yourself. You're not wrong. Can we get ten back? I'm surprised that the bull item has not been added to the barbershop yet. That's a good item too. The bull item, the oolong bull. Yep. Oh yeah, that's true. I mean, to be fair, has the Krillin thing been fixed on Global yet? Nope. <laughs> Let's be real. Uh, true. <laughs> I still, like, I know this, uh, obviously we have Ghostly Nate uh, in 5.9, right? And he's he's unable to get Prime Battle Krillin because, or Prime Battle Frieza because he doesn't yeah. have Krillin. Still <laughs> so to this day. And, and you know what's even worse about that? I know we're getting off topic a little bit, but this is actually important to note is because this is eventually going to compound into itself, assuming that the next LR is going to require you use Frieza on your team. Because if you can't yep. get Frieza, yeah. then you can't continue that that chain. Right? I mean, yeah, it's just gonna be like it's gonna compound from prime, prime battle LR to prime battle LR to whatever they do in the end, where we use all six prime battle LRs for something, which we'll see what they do that for potentially. Yep. But yeah, it's just so funny that we still don't have the update for Krillin and stuff, man. It's ridiculous. <laughs> But yeah, in terms in terms of the food event, uh, mm -hmm. it, you can only do it once a day, can't you? And I I just right, got a chance right. to look at it before we started recording, and I didn't even realize that there's there's a whole bunch of missions that are all revolved around picking up a certain number of different type of orbs. Um, so it does say in the description of the event that it encourages you to bring orb changers and uh, like orb changing items, which until I'd actually gone into it and read the description, I was completely not aware of that. So that's something that is gonna be quite interesting because with only one attempt a day i guess you kind of have to plan oh, out like which ones of those you want to try and do like each time dude, it's it's very easy because it's like you just bring the orb changing items right and you can get yeah. like mm -hmm. like i i've done two runs of it right because right now it's been up basically two like jp's had reset already since yeah it came out so i have all the missions done except for 
get 10 str orb oh, okay right? like nice it, yeah because you could because you could do all your orb changing right with one character get them and then the second character and it's just like you just easily get that done very mm -hmm. fast i, I like did... it though like it's it's a little extra something added to it right? yeah yeah because i did rewards... notice some of the missions are forgetting like three orbs of one color and three orbs of another color so it's probably yep. easier to try and get those ones out of the way and then you can see what you've got left and um, I don't imagine they would be too difficult, but yeah, it was something that was, like you say, it's a nice surprise thing that they've added as like a little extra way to do it. Because a lot of the time they release these special events alongside animations where it's like, play this event to get this new support item, but there is no gimmick to it. You just go in with whatever team you want, one shot the boss, and then you're done for the day. So I do like that they've added that uh, little bit of something else to it. The rewards are very good, by the way, because it's all those missions give you either the dinosaur tail or meat items. Mm. So it's 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 worth doesn't, it to get it. The final mission gives you a large uh, one, doesn't it? Which are like they're the super hard ones. They basically never yeah, give those I th out. I think that so. one is doing the event, like because there's there's some for actually doing the event a certain amount of times as well. Mm. Okay. Any more things you would like to add regarding the food battle event? Uh, uh, this is I... something that they should stop doing during these celebrations and instead keep like a permanent one around because we had one yes. for the worldwide download celebration as well where you're able to basically do it once per day and you got a mission that gave you meat items i think this should just be a permanent stage that should just sit there and give you like one meat item per day That's... even like a small one because like that would be very helpful for like free players so that you could build up a bunch of these meat items and then whenever you'd want it maybe world tournament maybe when a prime battle lr comes out and you could just sit there and grind as much as you want right so i think that could be very helpful that's what i was going to say because yeah. i was actually going to equate this to the roshi event because they used to only have the roshi event around during celebrations and then eventually at some point they were just like all right let's just have this be permanent and it's like why can't we just skip that we're six years into the game just ha ha skip that <laughs> phase and have this just be permanent mm. yeah i agree it's just one of those things that's like, there's no real justification for it not to be permanent. <laughs> Alright, let's move on to the next topic, or do we have anybody before I get cut out again? Okay, let's move on to the next topic. Um, of course, we are in the time frame of the Goku, Gohan, and Goten day, and we got a special login bonus where you are able to get... Uh, free characters from the barber shops. So I immediately got AGL Goten with one book of war and I think that was the right decision. And I didn't even have the guy. <laughs> so um, <laughs> this is one like oh, of wait, really a couple. Yeah, yeah I didn't crazy. even have the guy. It's like well, one of a couple that's, SSR that I do. That's a really good free yeah. character. They just gave you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's yeah. a huge dub. Like, I, I summon quite a lot, but this is a character, like, I never got, like, mm -hmm. super weird. So I immediately got, like, I, I wasted all my three scrolls for the for the him. Ah, oh, wasted, yeah. I think that it was the right decision, so. Yeah. Wait, I mean, to be fair, there was a point where Truth just could not full, te full tech Vegito on, like, any banner ever for, like, a year <laughs> straight or something. <laughs> Mm, yeah, it's, yeah it's always funny because people do say like when you if you've pulled like maybe you get lucky and you pull the new banner unit straight away but you don't pull the side unit and you always see people say like ah it's fine they go into the general pool afterwards but like so many people have those stories of like that one particular unit that they can't get because like even the amount i've summoned since the worldwide celebration i still don't have the physical tn that came out during then <laughs> so there's always there's always like one unit that just never pops up so i mean uh, dude, they, they told me like oh what are, you're so stupid summoning for gohan and piccolo on the agl ui goku banner because you're just gonna pull it a million times from like the lr banner in part two and then you know over twenty thousand stones used over the course of the next four months i didn't pull another tech gohan Right. Mm. Yeah. So like it's yeah, you <laughs> it, yeah. it could be tricky getting those certain unfeatured <laughs> banner units. Um but yeah, yeah. one one thing I think is really great about this uh is I probably like a lot of people, when I saw that as one of the entries in the news where I was like, Oh yet again, you know, they're giving out three of these uh is it called book of war thing so yeah. and straight away in my head it was like oh great so i can get another copy of one of the family kamehameha units that i don't need so it's nice that they've actually added <laughs> some of those other ones now yeah. because for me personally i don't need any extra copies of uh any of them but obviously like a lot of people might be in the position sunblade was in maybe some people who 
blasphemously do Barber SSRs they don't think they're going to use, and then you suddenly realize that AGL Goten's getting an easy A and he's super good. Now you can obviously pick up those copies. So I am glad that they are updating the pool of units that you can get with those tickets, because I think they must have come out a good three or four times and you could only get the family Kamehameha units yeah. with them so it is nice that well, there's a bit more variety on offer now as well I'm happy they put all their Kai's in there thing that they've... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they've, oh. to Redstone, Bluestone to all those they just added an Elder Kai oh, oh yeah, I, yeah. I am unfortunately in that position now where yeah with the most recent sales that they added to Global I used my Bluestone to get an Elder Kai oh, my so. God. oh dude I have like, blue, the, blue the stone, one thing Redstone, I will say I wish they didn't do is like you can only buy one copy. I would have loved to use all three of my Book of War scrolls or whatever they are to buy three copies of AGL Goten as well. But yeah, I ended up just buying one copy and two Elder Kai's basically because the rest of it wasn't necessary. Dude, it's been years since I've used any of those. Bluestone, Redstone, Book of War. Like, I, just have, I just don't even use them. I just, I just let yeah, them the, sit there. Like, I don't, the whatever. issue I have with them is they always like give you like these... I'm gonna say outdated, but like these old, old, old units from like two years ago in those, and it's just kind of like, well, I kind of want at least a unit from like, you know, maybe six months ago or something, you know? And you know, you're spending like, what's it, like $54 for you two to get the blue stone? It's like, you know, I'd like a little more updated units on that. <laughs> they actually have a section on global. I don't know if this exists on JP. I'd be surprised if it did. There's a section in the uh, treasure exchange shop on global that is like blue stone number two or something, and it's been there for like four years and it's never gone away <laughs> oh really yeah it's still there yeah. it's been there for like four years now i swear i think that'd it was be like so during, annoying I, i'm pretty sure it was during like between two and three years we got that second blue stone i think during christmas even maybe i'm not sure but yeah that'd be so annoying scrolling through that every time you go through the bible shop because we're on like blue stone seven or something and number two is still in there it's like all right i think mm -hmm. we're past this by now that's a global shaft, man. Yeah, it's just <laughs> less organized menus. Man. Global not shaft, a, wah! It's not a thing. <laughs> so I think we are all in agreement that AGL Goten is the best unit of them all. So yeah. you would of recommend course. getting him? I think people on global don't really understand how powerful that unit is going to be, obviously, until he gets his EZA. So just mm -hmm. take our word for yeah. it that he's yep. the best. Yep. Yeah, again, yep. when I was doing the STR LR Broly EZA, like trying to get as far as I could, it got to the point where AGL LR Gohan was getting floated off rotation, and I was keeping AGL Goten on rotation. There you go. <laughs> okay, so, oh, um... Wait, are you saying yep. he's better than LR Gohan? <laughs> uh, in certain given situations, he can be, yes. Mm, that, there that's you what go, I'm saying. global it's players. Situational. It's situational. You heard it here first, global players. LR Gohan sucks, and Goten is better. From the well, LR AGL Gohan is definitely way overrated at this point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. True. Don't the JP players like consider him like the best LR, or have they moved on past? No. Him okay. The last point? time I saw it, he's just super popular, and I think the I I, I just, I'm sticking to this as the reason why they did this. The reason why I believe they made the last phase of this Legend of Goku event tack is because of him, and they don't want people just spamming him every time they run the event. <laughs> I mean that just didn't necessarily work no. out because everybody and their mother still is using him and winning. No, yeah. I thought he was. I thought it was the hard counter to, to UI Goku, the greatest, not Gohan. No, nah, <laughs> it's, it's definitely Gohan. No, no. I like how they made him text <laughs> no. of the best unit in the game, Royal Blue Vegeta, be good in that phase. <laughs> oh no, no, it's the counter UI Goku. I'm closing my ears. La la la, la. you can't. Catch me <laughs> oh man. <laughs> All right, so um, as I said, we are in the time frame of the Goku, Gohan, and Gogoten day, and um, yeah, aside from the food battle event, the legendary Goku event, and those um, yeah, those three characters, we didn't get a banner, or something else like Ningen. Would you prefer the banner? Well, of course, you would have preferred a banner, but um, uh, well, what maybe. were your wishes? Um, but yeah, it is because it is that time of year where I guess because the schedule is so different now this year because obviously we did get the gt dual dokon fest at the same time because obviously normally around this time this is where we would have potentially expected to see some sort of global first um so obviously there not being any sort of banner tease or announcement in the news i feel like that i feel like that is probably because the schedule at this point has changed so much compared to previous years 
Um, so I don't know if we're still assuming there's going to be like a part two LR, like that technically is part of the GT stuff, but the the Goku, Gohan, and Goten Day doesn't seem like there's going to be a banner this year, but at least they haven't revealed anything yet. I mm, am expecting mm. a part two LR. Mm. Come on, LR Super 17. Let's go. I would actually <laughs> say there's a him. I want to say there's a decent chance of them doing one, but there, I would I would caution people not to get too excited because there's a chance they don't. So. Mm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's a yellow coin banner. Who cares, anyways? <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. people, the average player isn't going to summon on it, let's be honest. <laughs> true. I disagree. I, 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 wish I, I spent single real. summons on every banner. Single summons. I'm a real gamer. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> then I go to Twitter and complain Jesus. global shaft when I don't get the unit first single, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the other guys, are you satisfied with uh, Goku Day, basically? Or is there something missing? Um... I mean, as a continuation, plus, you know, with the, the upcoming B-Pan EZA and stuff, at least as a global player, plus, of course, the SJ4 EZA is coming sometime during the midweek, 12th or 13th, I think they announced it for. I'm I'm fine with it. I think we've gotten a lot of stuff to do in this celebration, especially global side. We got ESBR, mm -hmm. LGE, um, the IDBH, the new IDBH, of course, is there. We got the EZA is coming. We have the free-to-play EZA is also coming. I think we have we we came out as as winners. I think there was enough to go around. Yeah. I mean, we have also the greatest event coming, chain battle. Of course, can't forget that. <laughs> okay, let's well, go. Hold on. Let's oh. go. I, I actually <laughs> uh, this might be a little bit blasphemous, but I actually like the chain battles that are at the same time on both versions because we get to suffer together through it. It's 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 beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> We're all in this together as one. Yep. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next topic. And yeah, Global NJP is waiting for them to arrive. The Extreme Z Awakenings for the OG Super Saiyan Force. So um, yeah, we know that artificial life forms is their weakness. And um, yeah, maybe we can kick off a sh very short discussion on how they would look like, or what are your wishes for them? Real quick, real quick, so, real quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cause I saw, so they updated the, we know that the original news, right, for Global was really scuffed, right? It didn't have the, the Super Saiyan 4's EZA in there. Then they added the Super Saiyan 4 EZA, but they didn't put the category weakness banner that they always put in there in the news, right? Mm -hmm. So they did the Global Celebration Info the other day, and people were coming in the chat while I was streaming Resident Evil, and they were like, oh, there's an artificial life form category like banner dropping. Like, is there going to be an artificial life form, LR? And it's like, no, 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 no. That's just to signify what the weakness of the Super Saiyan 4s is to, right? Yep. But again, that's a side effect of the scuffed news at the start of the celebration on the global side. Scuffed news, huh? <laughs> what, Where okay, have you heard that before? I would, let me hear your term for it. No, I think it's a good term for it. I'm, 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 I'm not knocking on it. <laughs> that's correct. Uh, I don't in, know what they were thinking. It's global. Uh, Incompetence. Yeah. It, they gave everything to global that they gave to jv they just hid it all for no reason well well I, I, like i mentioned it's it's back to the point we were we've been discussing on streams as well it's like they love making goku day a lot bigger than it is on jp for but some why? reason we've seen it. I, I don't know why that that's a good question you should ask Koski, not me <laughs> but but it's just like i've seen it with, uh, two years ago with, Go, because it with, with like gohan that, that's a japanese thing like the, yeah. the goku like the goku i know right? yes like, it's yeah, it's odd it's, it's really odd but it's just like it's been a thing we had the gohan goten we had tech broly come out first those two were like part of this big goku day celebration that was more so exclusive on global than it was jp it's then just... we had str ui goku come first out it was just like I don't understand their obsession with making this a lot bigger on global than it should be than it is on JP for some reason. It's, it's just the same issue, really, um, that we've had in past celebrations that are shared. It's if they're shared celebrations, you should make them the same on both versions. Th yeah. These are yeah. technically they are the same, but why is the timing different? Like, wh what is the purpose? Yeah, yeah. It's it's I very like odd. I feel like I'm in the minority, but I don't really care about how they do the news and stuff because I'm the person where, like, JP releases, like, all the stuff in the news and once, like, okay, yeah, this is exciting. Then you have to wait, like, a week and a half for it actually comes. Like, wow, I wish I didn't know about this right now. Well, I don't <laughs> care about the actual news, <laughs> but it's the fact that this one is that JP actually got the events before Global. Mm. 
Yeah, because obviously it creates that thing that I'm sure we've all seen multiple times already mm. on the time. Global shaft, where? People, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not only do people start crying global shaft straight away, but then when the news does get changed, because for whatever reason, then obviously people start saying like, oh, you know, they, they only did this because they saw everybody complaining when it was probably scheduled yeah. for... Um, I think, Truth, you were talking about it when we were in a chat the other day about the fact that Global very often doesn't release the details of these events way early, whereas they often do on JP. So yeah. when there's a combined celebration, it then does look kind of weird that Global is not announcing them at the same time, but they just often do that. So The other thing, too, is it's not like they have like super fast turnarounds if they're obviously small-ass Global team, right? Like It's not like... It absolutely was not the case where they drop the celebration info, everyone complains, and they're like, oh, okay, actually, let's put it out. Like, they mm. definitely had the stuff all ready to go, all translated, all that, but they just, like morons, just didn't put it in there. I don't know why. Mm. That reminds me of the time where Zahal, when the physical go tank stuff came out, and they, they uh, buffed them for your release because everyone's complaining about the details or whatever. And so I was like, oh, they changed the details. Y'all know why? Because of me. And I was like, bro, come on. <laughs> like, like, people give themselves a little too much uh, credit. Yeah. Too much of, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, because I, I feel never... like we've seen, we've seen enough times in the past where things have happened and there's a bit of an outcry where they don't respond. So every now and mm. then when it's almost like convenient timing that they do do something right after a bunch of people complain i think it's uh they've kind of shown that they 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 sort of have a plan even if it is a bit weird and we don't understand it and it's and not a lot of it is based on uh feedback from people especially like people getting mad on twitter but yep a part of me is glad they don't really listen to feedback that much because uh you look at grand cross and them listening to global player base killed the global version of that game basically yeah, Grand Cross Masters, you name it. Like, it, it, too much feedback can be a problem as well. I think it's ne it yeah. needs to be a good balance, but mm -hmm. some games have shown that they aren't able to balance it really well, and I don't want Akatsuki to be like that either. But Wait, what do you mean? Yeah, they need to have a... Stop, please. Let's not, let's not <laughs> they need to be like a... <laughs> so, what will those EZAs be like? Um, what are your wishes for them? Um, okay. I think the interesting thing for Global is we don't have the same name update. So obviously, I, f I feel like but at this point, they have hopefully learned their lesson after Super Saiyan 3 Broly because all the other 120 lead EZAs have been good. So they, they really need to make them good enough that you would consider running them over the LRs. Because, I mean, even on JP, you can run them on the same team, but they don't link. So you have to think about your team building and how you want to make your rotations. So they need to do something to make them interesting enough that you want to run them um not necessarily they don't have to like power creep them to just make them hit harder than the lrs but maybe give them some sort of interesting utility maybe like support as part of their passive or something but they definitely need to do something to make them appealing over the lrs i think i think even without actually doing anything at all they're gonna be better than the lrs <laughs> I think like okay, yeah, I mean, here's where we're at, where where, where these guys are going to be useful. Because if you look at the GT Hero team, the team is already like one of the best teams in the game. Like the team is ridiculous. This mm -hmm. this Golden Week update made the GT Hero team like they introduced the team. They were instantly instantly just like, hey, let's make this team the best. And then they were just like buffing it with, like look at the banner units they came out. Look at Trunks and Goten. Look at Gohan and Goten. Those are probably the best banner units in the game. Um, mm. And it was obviously on purpose that they did that. These TURs are like, you know, they're both top three TURs probably in the game. Um, and when you look at the, the Super Saiyan 4, I think, you know, more than buffing GT Heroes, because I don't really think GT Heroes needs a buff, they can make them specifically buff the Grade 8 Power Team, because that team needs mm. to buff more than GT Heroes does. So if I was to design these uh, Super Saiyan 4 EZAs, I think I would more so be inclined to have them be more specifically geared towards buffing uh, the Great A Power Team over GT Heroes. So maybe like a, I don't know, 20% attack and defense and like 15% crit chance to GT uh, or not GT Hero to a Great A Power unit or something on on the on the rotation, and then uh, Goku Vegeta is gonna have like 150% attack and defense and then some kind of ridiculous super attack effect and that's probably all he needs. They don't really need much to them. Like, add like 30% to their passive. Give Goku some type of defense so it doesn't get molly whopped in every event in the game, like Super Saiyan Blue Kyle Ken does, and they'll be good to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Super Saiyan Blue making... Goku, when he came out, he was like one of the hardest hitting units in the game, right? So, yeah. by far. Easy, yeah. Yeah. They, uh, he could be up there again, who knows? 
Yeah, because uh, they they're both really really good. I always liked Vegeta more because though he's also aged better because he had the defense on top of the attack, and then like Goku didn't really do like an astronomically more attack for me to justify running him and getting clapped on defense over Vegeta half the time. Yeah. I mean, it also kind of helped that, like, especially for, well, Global obviously had to be released at the time, but uh, on JP and whatnot, you know, when uh, Attack SJ for Gogeta came out and Omega Shenron came out, Shadow Dragon Saga and Fusion were the only categories for a long time, and Shadow Dragon Saga had AJL SJ for Vegeta, whereas Goku didn't because he was from the Baby oh. Saga. So that also, I feel, helped Vegeta a bit more because he was an option for a category team, right? Mm, I mean, yeah. they were the only categories you played JP. If you played global, you still didn't have categories. Yeah, I mean, yeah, of course, but still, they were the first <laughs> categories nonetheless. That's, a, that's why I said I obviously global had to be released, but I was talking more about JP when Fusion and yeah. Shadow Dragon Saga came out first, right? So, yeah. which RIP to that Shadow Dragon team. It, it's, uh, the GT bosses team, I feel, is in the same situation where, like, you don't run have, like, the specific six units. You just can't really run that team or else it just sucks. Yeah. It reminds me a lot of, like, the original Shadow Dragon team. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Last thing for me on this topic, though, that's in something interesting is think about the GT categories we have right now. We have, I mean, Grade A Power is not really a GT category, but I kind of just lump it in there. We have Shadow Dragon Saga. We have GT Heroes and GT Bosses are, like, the main GT category. I think if they started with GT heroes and bosses, they would have never made a Shadow Dragon Saga team, right? Is that fair? Mm, yeah, very probable. Yeah, I feel like probable, yeah. I feel like a lot of the design problems in terms of the categories that we're getting is that they they started with very specific categories, and now we're getting broader ones, and it's like okay, now the specific ones are just irrelevant. I mean, yeah, it it it's, it it was weird, especially when they did the whole crossover heroes thing. That was like uh, one of the bigger notable notif- noticeable ones, where it was like, well, 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 why did you make the heroes category in the first place, then, right? <laughs> should have yeah. just yeah. done should have just done crossover from the get go. Exactly, mm. it's like the same thing with that, yeah. A, R- a Raleigh rerun win? <laughs> Never. <laughs> What if? What if? Okay. What if Arale is the unexpected character in the new movie, though? <laughs> oh, that's time. true. Okay They'd have that. to bring her back then. I love Arale, so I'd be okay with that. Yeah, yeah. Although, didn't cool. they have the episode of Super and like yeah. they never really yeah. brought a unit? F- they never brought a unit for her yeah. based on that, did they? No, they, no, they didn't. But if it's in the movie, they have to. <laughs> it's like yeah. you have to bake <laughs> off the movie hype, bro. Like, yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's move on, and we talked about Shadow Dragon Saga, and yeah, the other Shadow Dragons are out on JP. Uh, yeah, that's a new Battlefield LR. How good are they at 55% since, since you're only able to get one copy from the barbershop? Uh, Truth, uh, what's your take on them? Did you use them? I don't have them, because uh, they cost too much. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> really? Oh, wow. Yeah, which yeah. which is what I, I don't, I don't like have... about the... The Battlefield LRs, I hate when they, because like when I first saw the Shadow Dragons, I was like, oh, these are sick. They heard their Battlefield LRs, like, oh, well, I don't care anymore. Because like the, you knock a bit of rainbow with them for like a year. Yeah. And then like, it's like you probably don't even have the other Battlefield LRs rainbowed yet. Because like no, by the time I, you I ever get all, one rainbowed, they're really like I have all the like other LRs more. rainbowed. I just, I just haven't, it's because of that that I'm not able to get the Shadow Dragons right now, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's, they did give you a, a little bit of an extra amount of battlefield currency per run, right? Like, if you go on, like, the Dokkan Wiki and stuff like that, you could see the difference. Because, like, Global and JP got yeah. battlefield at the same time. Global still has the old enemies and the old bosses and stuff like that. Whereas JP has the new ones, and yeah. you could see sort of the updated currency. But, yeah, I mean, the, the LR Shadow Dragons, it's 370,000, I think, to get one copy. And currently, I've got, like, 320,000 or something like that. So... Just a little shy. But, I mean, one thing that I really hate about those units is that there's only one copy available in the Baba Shop anyway. So, it's just yeah. very difficult to, to utilize I them, just right? really I can, hate uh, how they handle Battlefield LRs. It's so stupid. I can uh, say, like, I know because I remember seeing a tweet. If I'm not mistaken, Global or the old Battlefield season gave you 170k in total. And uh, the new one gives around 224 or something like that thousand. Um, mm. So... It's a bit of a, it's a 50k difference, but it's still probably not enough to buy any of the LRs that are worth 300k or more per Battlefield yeah. season, which is a bit odd to me. I, I think, I think that is a bit of a problem with them because like, 
I only recently decided, because I don't really use them that much, even though I do think they're pretty good, but mm -hmm. I only recently picked up the last copy of Mecha Freezer and King Cold. And so now I'm looking at my game now, and I have two copies of Deborah and Barbady that I can buy, because mine is still currently 55%. But I only have enough points to buy one of them, and then that leaves me with about 150,000 uh, left. Which means not only would I then have to save up at least one more entire Battlefield season to get the other one, but then it means, yeah, like when the Shadow Dragons drop, I'm probably not going to have enough to get a copy of them for a certain amount of time. So yeah. it's, uh, I feel like they are a little bit too over. Because, I mean, some of them are really good. Like, I was actually very surprised the first time I used Barbady and Deborah in an actual event, because I, funnily enough, didn't ever use them until I decided to do a video using the Prime Battle Boo and Barbady, because obviously they go well so well together. And I was really impressed with how good they actually are when you use them. But I don't know if I'm going to use them enough. Do I want to buy another copy of them now and then not have any points for when the Shadow Dragons come out? So it does seem like they need to adjust how much they cost based on how much they give you a little bit i think yeah, what yeah. they also do is stop making battlefield like a monthly thing just let it just stay there forever i hate when they make new game modes and they just make them come Whoa. like once every so often uh, well, i mean okay but it, it is always there there's only like a, a two-day window sometimes where it's not there right yeah, like, the, like the reason you know. they do that for a month is because like you know, okay, so the recent one on JP, a lot of people struggle with, but, like, I destroyed every stage, like, pretty easily, right, with no difficulty. But a lot of okay, people actually have trouble. But a lot of people actually have trouble with it. Yeah, so man. it's like they do, a, like, a month-long thing so that people actually have a chance to, like, take runs and cracks at it. Because, like, Omega is ridiculous. And it ta it'll take you, you know, a half hour, 40 minutes just to get to him. So, mm -hmm. like, they want it. That's why they make it a full month is to give players a chance to actually beat him and get all the rewards. The one thing yeah, in the uh, make it two weeks. I was gonna say the one thing in the battlefield shop that actually like makes me upset that I can't just go in and buy it is the stamina. I wish I could just max out the stamina, but I have to obviously prioritize the <laughs> LRs over that. So I have never, well, I've see, never had a chance to ever buy the stamina. That's that's the reason why I'm behind on having copies of the LRs because I did that was like the first thing I bought. Uh -huh. I bought all the stamina upgrades, and then at some point when I was. Um, got running low on them i actually did spend a few points on buying orbs as well so yeah. I'm, uh, well you know wanna... listen <laughs> you global players get to spend real life money to get them lucky guy yeah, yeah like I 10 thousand ever <laughs> yeah <laughs> I would. it's like 20 dollars to almost fill out one corner of the four paths i don't, I don't <laughs> know must no be thanks. nice no i thanks. sure wish i could I sure wish I could. <laughs> so yeah, as for me, like I bought them immediately. For me, since in Metal Cooler, the army, uh, this is the first LR where I think that's really worth it. Like Talon might kill me for this one, but I don't give a damn about like uh Oob. Oob. <laughs> like, Yeah. What, but he he's as tier Majub's awful, best partner bro. though. He'll be amazing when Maj Majub gets his easy A. <laughs> I remember Trey <sighs> tried to defend that Oob so bad. He's for, part of GT he Heroes, the new category, though. <laughs> I, th I think Oob is, is solid. I think that HP yeah, he's regen uh, is very, a couple of times, very useful, actually. Like, like you, you can use the HP regen with him and Vegeta and Nappa. Like, that could be very helpful in several events. Oh, yeah. Vegeta like, like, and like, top tier option. Like, you can't, you can't sit there and say <laughs> that Oob is that bad when he could be that helpful in Battlefield. Which yeah, again is I something can. that everyone is struggling on. He's be, he was super well, useful. Well, okay, you can against... be wrong. <laughs> he was super no, useful against it, uh, Jiren uh, during the previous battlefield for, on Global. Of course, we're on Freezer now, but when Jiren was around and we had him as AGL, he was such a good unit to have because he'd lower attack and everything. Plus, he'd be a free heal. Yeah, I didn't say that that he is bad, but nah. what I'm missing from him is like a unique selling point, and the Shadow Dragons have that actually with that kind of leader skill. Because I don't expect to pull the new um, legendary summon LR like for multi. Of course, I get that happens a lot for me, but for, uh, for, <laughs> um, <laughs> this time I I think that I actually might need this yeah. this LR for, for to to run this uh, kind of team. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going love when like, you pull five copies in your first multi. The the other thing to mention too that you just brought up Sunblade is that if they don't end up giving us a GT bosses like lead as this um, summonable LR for part two, I don't actually think we'll get one until like worldwide download celebration. So that even mm. further gives uh, yeah. these shadow dragons like value, right? Because that they're value, literally yeah. going to be the only lead for this team for months if that's the case. Right. 
So, yeah, let's talk about um, the current Battlefield season on JP. <laughs> I read a lot of tweets that this season is really, really hard, and I, I, I can see that. The difficulty is way higher than before. Um, we uploaded a, a funny short uh, that's not to be taken seriously, of course. Um, but yeah, Trunks, the, the physical Trunks from the Android 13 movie, can super. And uh, yeah, he increases his attack so much <laughs> that he can destroy you in one turn. Um, the second form cell seems to be very annoying. For me, it was somehow very easy. Maybe I got lucky. I don't know. Um, but yeah, Truth, what's your opinion about the season? Is it, is it the hardest one yet? Uh, yeah. It, it's Omega is insanity, right? Because like... He is, like, very difficult, like, similarly difficult to Jiren because he lowers your defense when he super attacks, which is also mm -hmm. one gimmick of how they made the GT Legendary Goku event harder. Whereas having the bosses lower your defense, that makes them really cut hard after mm -hmm. that super attack. But the thing about Omega compared to Jiren a couple Battlefield bosses ago is Omega's immune to everything. He can't do anything to him. So, and he's locking your rotations, too. So he's Oof. just very, very troublesome. Because, again, Jiren, yeah. you could lower his attack, right? Yep. And that would really help, like, sort of, like, mitigate the amount of damage he's doing. doesn't work with Omega. You just have to beat him. Yeah, right. Like, as for me, you now I remember, he, he always locked the right characters for me. He never supered the first turns. <laughs> um, so I never experienced the harder difficulty. Um, maybe I should try again, but... Uh, so... Yeah, I, every, I saw... Yeah, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, every battlefield, like... You have to go through it three times to get, like, the full rewards, right? Beat it three times. Mm -hmm. One of those three yeah, times, exactly. Omega did beat me. I did lose to him once because he, mm. he of the uh, rotation locking. Like, there are times where you will lose, and I don't really think you can do anything about it because of the locking. Because you can't use items in Battlefields. So you can't rectify that. Yeah. Yep, right. Yeah, but I'm lazy, so I only <laughs> did one run. And Resident Evil Village Hell is out yeah. now, so I don't have time. <laughs> yeah, well, I the good news, um, Sunblade, you have a full month to get it done. Yeah, because that's I yeah. know I, I normally do that as well, because they obviously have the weekly reset thing, don't they, where they have the couple of missions, so you can just get a couple of extra thousand. So I normally don't mm. bother doing all three clears like on the first day and just spread it out, because I've got, I've got to be doing a few of the stages to do those missions anyway, so I just leave it so each of the first three weeks i do one playthrough but i feel like you know like a lot of things in the game it does depend on the level of your box because it was the same with jiren when he came out a bunch of people couldn't beat him uh when the latest one came out a bunch of people struggled with freezer and a lot of it does come down to rng because if you're saying omega does obviously sound a lot like uh, jiren one of the things i noticed in one of my first attempts when he was freshly added is there's a huge difference between if he's like attacking you five or six times in the first slot whether the first one is a super attack or if like the last one is a super attack because like you were saying the fact that he lowers your defense makes such a massive difference that then yeah all those follow-up attacks do a lot of damage so mm. sometimes you can just get unlucky with uh, the attack placement and stuff but obviously you are able to keep trying it multiple times and obviously like you said you've got a whole month to work through it it's one of those modes where you can get up to a particular stage and then just quit out and come back to it later and you're still you've still kept your progress so it's uh something you can work towards yeah right so yeah i i definitely have to agree that this uh battlefield season is the hardest one what made me like really laugh very hard was the the in super vegeta uh from the cell saga like uh, he replaced uh, i believe angel goku or super saiyan 3 goku and super saiyan 3 goku charged his super attack pretty much you you had to wait three turns i believe and then he supered but you could seal him afterwards and his super attack didn't do <laughs> that much damage but S uh, super vegeta he can super every turn and his super attack does even more damage like um that, that kind of balancing is is very weird but um yeah as yeah. i said before my ro my rotations were so perfect that i didn't struggle uh, with that. <laughs> that's funny that they didn't um, just give that the super vegeta like a seven turn charge because basically what he did in the show right he just charged like the whole episode yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think that's one thing about battlefield as well that does come up every time is there's always the odd stage here or there that if you go into it unprepared because you haven't read like what that particular unit's ability is for that turn it can take you by surprise because there was i remember one in quite an old battlefield there was the sayer man one 
where you basically have to stun or seal him, otherwise he super attacks you for like a ridiculous amount of damage. And if you weren't prepared for that, you could just go in and get killed immediately. So there is uh, a little bit more team building required for some of the stages, depending on the level of your box. Because obviously, for some of us, I'm sure we probably just go into it each time, and it's like, I just put together a mono team of my most powerful units of that typing, and usually they're just able to sail through it so it is interesting that they add some of these other mechanics but i am disappointed I'm, I'm, i know it's typical he does it in a lot of events that he's in but i'm uh, sad to hear about omega with the rotation locking because i think that is my least favorite like enemy ability <laughs> from all events yeah, so, yeah i hate that so much dude. but yeah everything in dokkan like is rng so yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you 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 will you will clear it eventually don't worry about that <laughs> So, uh, yeah, last bullet point for today is that Global actually got the Extreme Z area for BPAN and the rest of the Extreme Z Awakenings, right? So, yeah. um, Global players, uh, your thoughts? My Blink Blink actually Blink Blink is living good. Together. I was going to say, we haven't actually got them yet. I think they're coming out yeah. next week. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's, uh, it's yeah, I we think got it's... The, we got so I was gonna say we just got the news update to yeah. say that they are coming so this is we did kind of cover this briefly earlier but I think this falls under the same sort of like it's weird that they made the decision to announce this later on although like Goresh said it is weird that we're, we are getting the events but for some reason we're getting them slightly later even though it is a, supposed to be a joint celebration but for some reason they've put these easy A's into I guess technically what is our Goku Goten and Gohan Day celebration, whereas the when they were announced on JP, they were part one of the like GT and uh, celebration. So it's a bit weird that they've spaced them out like this. But yeah, we we do still have to wait, but we are getting them. So uh, regardless of what you think of whether <laughs> Akatsuki had it planned all along, I do think we we should take note, although some people never will, that you know, crying Global Shaft immediately is you know may maybe give it a give it a little while because uh we are getting all the stuff just for some bizarre reason we're getting it slightly later but i mean i would I'm prefer just... that to not getting it till november so yeah. i've just come to the conclusion that global players want to be oppressed so. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, they need well, a reason like Drew said earlier Shaft. about the missions is they will complain about everything like if global didn't get the missions they'd complain we didn't get them because the people who can beat them would complain that we didn't get them and then we did get them so the people who can't beat them because they are slightly harder on global complain about that so in a way like even though i am a global player myself i do kind of see that point of view <laughs> sometimes that they uh sometimes pe people just gonna i mean it's the internet right so people just gonna complain about everything regardless so it, usually it's just the vocal minority but like i said the end conclusion for me is even though we're getting it a week or two later i'm glad we're getting it now rather than you know five or six months down the line so yeah, I do think over yeah. <laughs> exactly exactly so uh, overall the celebration is a w for both versions i would say so i I'm, would I'm, argue I'm this okay is the best celebration in global history easily mm. i think there's is there even a discussion like is anything well, because even the, close? because it's part of the whole like super ultra mega celebration streak jp's been having and global's gotten it before to hit like the six year because that's when jp really picked up was the six year stuff yeah. then everything after is just with banger 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 now global's getting a part of that so like it's not even mm. a debate like well i would say four years up there but the fact that yeah. it's even in the same discussion as four years is pretty good well yeah as an anniversary it yeah the fact that it's yeah. in the same ballpark is pretty impressive so. i i think we need to remember like four year was like the pinnacle of like everybody was gassed about that that yeah. was the biggest celebration i think and a lot of players came back to the game f during that period and it was such so, so super high force. and the super well, saiyan force it works hey super saiyan i say this every time we talk about gt but it's like they n almost never <laughs> do gt celebrations so that when they actually do do them there's so much content because they yeah. they mm. do it so rarely yeah. it's like oh we have all this content that we haven't done yet so we can just release it all now yeah yeah but it, it's, just, throw in. it's so nice always but yeah go ahead I just want to throw in the fact that people are like, oh, well, I'd rather get it in November. It's like, obviously not many people say that, but some people are. It's like, bro, you don't even know you're going to be alive by November, bro. Just enjoy <laughs> yes. the event and move on about your life. Like That took a morbid like turn. It's, like, it's just like, because like, that's the way I look at it. It's like, oh, I have to wait two years for this? I, anything can happen, bro. 
I'm <laughs> getting not wrong. That's what I think about FGO every time. Will I still be playing? I don't know. But I have to wait two years from the unit I want. <laughs> we don't even know what's coming in November, though. Like, it, mm. That's the big question mark still. Is like, okay, this is supposed to be coming in November. What are they going to actually do for November this year on Global? Yeah. Is it mm -hmm. going to be Heroes? Is it going to be something else entirely? Is it going to be Global First? Who knows, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, that is slightly off topic, but I really hope... I know last year was the like a big anniversary for them, so that could be the only reason they did it, but I'm, I'm kind of hoping that they do keep the Heroes a, uh, like on both versions at the same time kind of thing as well, because that was really good. Yeah. I guess, yeah, we'll have to have to wait and see. If you're alive by then, like Iggy said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure he meant if the game's alive by then, YouTube. No, I meant you. Merciful. No, the game's always going to be alive. But uh, us, like, you don't know. None of us can be here by the time it comes out. We don't know. <laughs> Meteor could hit the Earth by then. You don't know, bro. The pandemic could come back. You never know. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's move on to the questions. Uh, due to the, due to the fact that this is pre-recorded. Um, we will not take a break here. So let's hop right in. And uh, yeah, I will kick. Things off with the first question from Twitter. So this is from the Tuga Saiyan. What is your favorite Dokkan meme? Mine is Estia, Super Saiyan, and <laughs> Goku. Uh, yeah, <laughs> baby, you already know. I've said it 20 times. I was gonna podcast, say. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a pretty simple, simple answer for me, brother. <laughs> uh, my favorite meme is Global Shaft. I was gonna say, that's probably one of the biggest ones. Um, <laughs> to be honest, I think I have to say I have to agree with SCR Super Saiyan Blue Kaiken because I was part of that video where it kickstarted everything. Like Melora and I have to kind of just go in line with that because it just we were there live watching him just go on about SCR Super Saiyan Blue Kaiken Goku and we couldn't do anything to stop him. <laughs> Mine has to be just cut him out the video. <laughs> Mine has to be to be released because they thought it was okay to do that. Oh my, oh, yeah, no, that is also true. The fact that they, whoever okayed that must have, I genuinely want to question their yeah, thought process. Not. Was it, was it Toshi still back then? Yeah, it was, or, it was still him. Oh I, don't he, I, don't, I don't think it, <laughs> I don't think he yeah, would. Yeah, no, of course, yeah. That would definitely not be his decision. It's definitely yeah, yeah. somebody else that thought <laughs> I, of that. I, I hope not. <laughs> in before, in before whatever you guys get for this year's anniversary is just to be released as well. They invent a new, <laughs> they they invent a new type of leader skill. <laughs> they invent a new leader skill, a new passive type, and like, okay, well, this is too strong for global. We can't give them this. <laughs> yeah, I, I, okay. Yeah. Anybody else regarding the meme? Uh, I mean, I think I was going to say either <laughs> Blue Kai Ken Goku or Global Shaft. So uh, <laughs> in terms of the ones that are funny, I do like seeing the different variations that people have made of the I've seen enough tech Gohan is better, but that's... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Another good one is, listen, Khalifa? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, to be fair, one of my favorite ones, I don't know if you would specifically say it's a Dokon meme, but some of the ones that I've seen recently of people dubbing over the active skills with truth shouts and quotes have been pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good, actually. I like that. Let's move that, on to yeah. our, our next question. And this one is from our subreddit. And uh, yeah. Kitty hitter for twenty, and yeah, I do not appreciate. You do that, what man. to kitties? You <laughs> do what to kitties, yes, bro? <laughs> Hold on. Uh, all right, go ahead. <laughs> all right. He he asks, do you think a mode like Champion Stadium in Pokemon oh, Masters God. would work in Dokkan? I think a mode where we could choose the parameter. I think a mode where we could choose the parameters of our battle would be fun. For example, turning off crits, additionals, adding more HP, disable dodging, etc. The harder you make it, the better the reward. So, Gorish, uh, why don't you go ahead and explain the Champion Stadium for us? I've only played it like twice. Gail, you just explain it. Okay, so oh, Champion okay. Stadium basically is where you basically go against, in the Pokemon terms, the, cha the Elite Four and the Champions. And then recently they've added this mode called Master Mode in it where you can adjust the parameters and you get points based on it. And based on the amount of points you receive, you get rewards. So you can kind of just adjust stuff like, say, make the opponent hit harder, like make their super attack stronger, make their normal attack stronger, uh, and so on and so forth. And this increases the amount of points you get depending on the difficulty you increase it to, right? So... I personally think it could be cool. Uh, it just depends on, in my opinion, the rewards because I don't mind adjusting the difficulty for an event, but it depends on the rewards, right? Like, okay, if at the end they're giving me like 
I don't know, 50 Elder Kai's or something. Sure, maybe I might want to go max it out and try it and see if I can get him. But it just depends on the rewards because obviously in Masters, there is a reason why you need to get it because that gives you your EX tickets and candy coins and stuff like that to enhance your characters. So similarly, if it's something like that here or maybe there's a... Uh, I don't know, a, a great free-to-play unit or something at the end, whatever it may be, then it could be cool. Otherwise, it just seems like an it just seems like a mode that you can adjust and make it to tune to your difficulty effectively and go on there, right? So yeah, I just think it it's fifty fifty. I mean, it sounds interesting. I guess the mm -hmm. way they could do it is if it's uh, if you get more points based on how many of these things that you like include or how difficult you make it and then they could essentially make it so kind of like battlefield where there's a shop that you then use the points yeah. to get those things because then yeah if they include like an lr every couple of months when it updates and then things like kai's and potential orbs and stuff like that then obviously you would be rewarded faster for making it harder but then if you're someone who can't necessarily do it at some of the harder like add additions you're still going to be able to get those things it's just going to take you slightly longer so i do think that would be interesting and then of course it does add the challenge for crazy people out there to like see who could be the first person to get set yeah. literally everything to max and see if you yeah. can actually do it i mean yeah, kind it's, of fun. Uh... i mean funnily enough uh, i just want to interject for a second there but it it if anything it's a more in-depth version of say how you adjust the world tournament system that's like two that's times. literally what i was about to say yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's kind of much more in depth in that sense where it's like you just have you can actually adjust the parameters, whereas World Tournament gives you like the set parameters already, right? Uh, but yeah. yeah, I refuse to answer the question because of his name. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next question, and this one is from Classic Case four five zero one from our subreddit and he asked who do you guys think is the most underrated dokkan fest or dokkan fest lr that came out after the fourth year anniversary so bardock mm -hmm. any takes uh we can go to agl Bob bardock oh okay <laughs> agl bardock is fair a fair shot i would probably say uh i know the link level update has kind of gassed him up a lot wait more, did he say dokkan fest or lr or dokkan fest lr mm, he's or lr, or oh, LR. okay okay I I think I know people will be like, wait, no, he's actually people are gassing him up now. But I feel like for the longest and even now to an extent, even on not his own team, I I feel if I have to say a Dokkan Fest LR, I'd have to say Incel is still kind of just not mentioned as much as he should be. I feel mm -hmm. him being he's been so useful in so many ESBR and SBR runs I've done where he's just been an absolute free heal, so so useful. Uh, obviously, the link level update has helped him quite considerably, not only on his own team, but just generally, I feel. Uh, um, mm -hmm. So I have to kind of say him. I think he's aged really well compared to like what we initially thought about him when he first came out, where, oh, 30% HP, we're never going to see his transformation. Oh, we're not going to see this. We're not going to, you know, be able to use him. He's not that great and then all that jazz. But I think he's considerably better now uh, than what I thought he used to be. I remember uh, when the details came out, I was like, oh, Cell is better. He's better. But then yeah. Gohan came out, he's like le like leagues ahead of Cell. Yeah. And then the link update came out, and then Cell's leagues ahead of Gohan in like every way now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the first thing that comes to mind when I hear the question, I, I feel like I have seen a few people lately put a bit more respect on them, but I feel like the Super Saiyan 2s, the Jewel Dokkan Fest, the Transforming Goku mm, and Vegeta, yeah. I feel like shot. people underrated them or didn't really talk about them that much after they came out. And they are still super good. Like, reusing some of them recently on ESBR, like, even pre-transformation, as long as you get those three orbs that gives them the little bit of an extra buff, after super attacking, they, d they just don't take any damage, apart from, you know, yeah. I guess, like, super attacks. Like, I feel like they are super underrated. I think they're both really, really good units. Uh, I think mine they're is, just released think... at a weird time. Mine is easy. It's just yeah. physical piccolo. Yeah. Mm, yes. I can Even now, that. actually, I still see people, like, saying that he's bad, which... He's a cheat code. Is crazy. Like, you, you, you just... He bypasses half the game for you. Yeah, it's like yeah. The people will people will say how amazing it is, like when you fuse Vegito, and it's like, now I can see super attacks for 10 turns. That's an amazing mechanic. It's like, yeah, it is. And physical Piccolo can do that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
The only thing, obviously, is his damage is very bad. He could literally heal the enemy, and I'd still use him. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like, very back in the day, me. we were talking about the Super Saiyan 2s. I still remember the tweet from Kawhi who said, like, uh, Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta is worse than Tech Vegeta Blue. And uh, in Goku Black, I was like, what the hell? <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, no. Um, but, yeah, I agree. So, uh, sorry, Truth, go ahead. Oh, mine is simple. AGL UI Goku. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this right. man gets disrespected, okay? He does? <laughs> yeah, he should be thought of as the unanimous king by everyone. And he's not, so he's disrespected. He's, you know he's who also, he is is also <laughs> underrated is Drunks and Goten. Nobody talks about them, but they're like secretly like top five at TUR very easily. Like not even close. Wait, okay, I was about to say I thought I thought you were talking about the AGL Lauren. I was so no, confused there for no. a second. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> I was like, 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 just I memeing it or I thought Gresh was memeing, yeah. But then I was like, wait, wait, yeah, like the Dokkan Fest one. Yeah, the Dokkan the, the battery units, yeah. I agree. Or it's no, like this Dokkan entire percent, year yeah. this entire year, like every Dokkan Fest comes out is like easily top three TUR. So then it's like, okay, well next week there's another top three. There's another one. There's another one. There's another one. It's like a lot I, of the units are released this year, like, I just forget about after they release. I mean, Because it's like, okay, well, the next one's the same thing. But, but even better. when they came out, just... like, people didn't really talk about them that much, I think. Yeah. 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 I mean, to be honest, uh, so far we've gotten two really good Goten and Trunks. Can we please get the EZA for the Goten and Trunks LR as well? Let's make all three Goten and Trunks as good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they've only given us, like, well, eight like Gotens only... this year, so... <laughs> the only thing that that's gonna hurt them in the long run is that how good they are is tied to having other kid trunks and kid gotens around like if they keep you know shoveling the, those units at us like they have this year it's fine but eventually that will hurt them down the line yeah i think they'll always be rev relevant because of their active skill it's so stupid yeah very good very good no i right, changed let's my move mind on to the <clears throat> okay Ch no Ch changed my mind tech to nimbo actually Oh my god. He's the best unit of the game, bro. Get out. You still need that leader, uh, Ningen? <laughs> I think it was literally like the run before I did it was when I asked you. He I remember so better than Exchange Boo, by the way, by a lot. It's not even close. <laughs> so the thing about him is that when he's good, he's good, right? Like I used him, I did the Corroded Body and Mind run for the Goku event earlier. And if you're getting, like even later on in the event, like if you're getting the two rainbow orbs and the four type orbs, even mine at 55% after supering, it's taking like double digit damage. But the thing where you really see his weakness is if you're in one of the harder events and you can't get the orbs, and then he just gets yeah. absolutely destroyed. Yeah. Or I'm, you could be I'm a shame sorry, when you suck everywhere all the your time. Your extreme tech run, and they're like, oh, I, everyone says tech to Nimble is bad until it comes to ESBR. Then you're like, but well, he still sucks. There's so many times <laughs> where I died because of him. <laughs> It's because you don't have much else to use. Like, there's a difference. It's like I saw. I, mean, I saw Toon. I'm not, I'm not trying to hate on on Toon. I love Toon. But like, he was running the Goku event last night. <laughs> oh god. And uh, <laughs> he was using Tech Vegito Blue, the transforming oh LR Tech Vegito god, Blue. That was too funny. And he was floating him off every turn, which is fine in theory until you get to the last phase when he can't dodge and he's not built up at all. Um, mm. There was one turn where he dodged a super attack that would have otherwise done like 900k to him. And he's like, oh my god, Tech Vegito Blue just saved the run. And it's like, well, you could have just not used him and you would have been okay, right? <laughs> Goresh, and I were, Goresh and I were just dying in Yeah, there, so bro. it's like, there are instances where units can look really good, but mm. it's just luck, right? And and then and, and yep. on the other hand, too, it's like, you could have just used a different unit where you wouldn't have been in that yeah. scenario in the first place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yo, you know what yeah. that perfectly describes? Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken! Oh my god. <laughs> oh god. Bro, I remember no, that was... Who was it? I think it was uh, Troco. We were discussing this when Six Tier was around, right? And I, he said, no, Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken still has a place on Reps of Universe. And I just listed off like seven or eight units that were ahead of him already. And then he, and he's like, yeah, no, yeah. enough. Oh it's yeah, after the anniversary, that... he's just, yeah, yeah, he's out now. After, <laughs> during that day where we got into VC, so I was like, I'm gonna prove you wrong, you I'm going to show y'all he's good. We got in there. Chuck's like, you know what? I'm with you, Sora. He's not as bad as people think he is. And then Sora started doing like seven runs in a row where he just died. And Chuck's like, oh. Oh. <laughs> he's like, I take that back. He does suck. Yeah, because the thing is, like, I, I can be critical of Janemba at times. But, like, it's like we talked about with some units before. I often... 
Like, I think when you're critically evaluating a unit, it's, you have to look at the times when they are at their worst. And obviously, with the way they designed Janemba and Pycon, you're missing out a huge amount of their kit. Obviously, Pycons is a lot easier to get, so it's not as bad. But yeah, Janemba, you take him into a hard event. Um, sometimes, you know, it, there's only a certain amount you can manipulate the orb field, but you've got to work with what has been put in front of you. And very often, a lot of those tech runs, I was just losing because... There was nothing I could do. I just could not get the orbs for Janemba. So it is very unfortunate because I think once you do get those, if you can actually activate his full passive, I don't think he's that bad. It's just the problem is there are many instances where beyond your control, you just can't get his full passive to activate and then he is quite bad. So Yeah, this is RNG at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's time to move on to the last question for today's episode. And this one is from Seb the Bastion. If you were able to make one significant change to Chain Battle without making it another bubble popping mode, what would it be? So Take it out the game. Another, but uh, isn't that the whole game? The whole game is popping bubbles. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think he says without just making it like a normal game mode. Um, Patan Battle, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't play at all. I mean, this is a question Save that's... This is like what the developer's job is like to think about like how to make events unique and interesting. So it's like not easy to think about this on the spot. I guess mm -hmm. what I mean s something similar to what they did to the Goku event, where it's like give units some different abilities. Where it's like you go into the first fight, maybe one of the units is sealing you, maybe one of them is I don't know, uh, supering twice in a turn, like stuff like that. I guess I don't really know. Well, I think in terms of, because we have talked about, obviously we talk about Chain Battle quite a lot, especially mm -hmm. when there is one going on. But I think in terms of without making major changes to the game mode, we have talked about some of these ideas previously. I think one of the biggest complaints that we all have is the randomness of everything, or at least how random it seems. So I think uh, something that would be very good was just to have a little bit more clarity on what exactly is doing what like the links and i think something that people point out a lot with some of the recent ones is they are making this weird decision to make the categories that you have to use these like really weird ones where there's not necessarily a great amount of options um i think it'd be good if they made them you know a little bit more accessible to more people i think would be a good just a straight off the bat good change but I mean, I'll just say, I think a bit, uh, if anything, they just need to be, give us a bit more clarity on like how the scoring is done. That's about it pretty much for me. Uh, just Plus it's annoying just... that you can spend ages going through your list, trying to find like the perfect setup. And this happened to me, not in the most recent one, I got fairly lucky. It was probably the one before, but I spent a while refreshing the friends list. I actually was like, no, I think I was at work at the time. I was like noting down on a notepad, like what all the total numbers were for the friend teams. And I found the perfect combination, the highest one I could possibly find. And then I went into the battle and the units it gave me to choose from for the three were all completely awful. And so yet again, <laughs> like I got that one step closer and the RNG screwed me over. So there's, uh, I think that's the main reason I don't like it is because every step of the way, there are just certain points where, you know, even if you've picked the best teams, you have no control over what is going to eventually affect your final score, which is really annoying. Can we just like take it out the game and give us OG Battlefield back, please? <laughs> no. <laughs> I think that'd be good. It's 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 time to wrap up, Ignan. It's time to wrap up. Yeah. <laughs> OG Battlefield is not that great, so um, You're let's lying, just end it for today. Crap, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, we are done for today. So, guys, if you want to submit your questions for episode 34, make sure to follow us on social media and watch out for our question tweet and yeah, the the respective threads on subreddit on our subreddit so um yeah we are done with episode 33 so yeah thank you very much to our guests Goresh, mass ningen the truth ignat and gail and uh yeah this is five gaming signing out <laughs>